Airbase's perch. Uh, one of the questions I get fairly frequently is to, or requests, I should say, is to do more videos on running a comic shop. And in particular, I think a lot of the questions are talk about the unique things about running a comic shop uh, versus another business. And I, I, I've been thinking about this question for a lot because this comes up quite a bit. And I'm never, I'm, I, I don't feel like I've got a really good handle on how to answer it in a way that's going to satisfy you. So uh, finally, I just decided let's let's give it a shot with uh, with what I can. And I'll give you my point of view. Now, my premise here may immediately invalidate <laughs> what I'm about to say for a lot of you. Uh, but I'm going to try it uh, to go for it anyway. And it's this. I, I don't think running a comic shop is fundamentally different from running any other small retail business. I'm not talking uh, Walmart or Target or a grocery store or something that is is massive or something that has uh, huge shipments of stock coming in, coming out, uh, part of an overall chain. Those are very different businesses. If you have a huge volume of product and if you have a uh, you know multiple locations and everything else, it's it becomes a very different animal. Um, I don't wouldn't call those places your average retail shop. Uh, I I think I you know we're talking smaller scale. Um, and so, but I, but I know a lot of people disagree with this, and I've talked to the retail uh, owners many times, and uh, a lot of them often want to come at this from the perspective of no, owning a comic shop is fundamentally different than any other retail business, except. Um, you know, and I've had this this uh, this chat with I think successful business owners um, and and people who are not successful. And anecdotally, it feels like the people who are most successful uh, view the comic book shop and the business as any other retail business. It's got product coming in. There's a profit loss margin that you have to take care of. There's uh, managing inventory and stock. There's doing marketing and promotion for yourself. There's uh, hi having staff uh, that is that is knowledgeable about the product, or at least can aid and benefit in some way. And there's you know tuning to your customer. All of those factors are the same whether you have a uh, a comic book shop or whether you have a you know, anything uh, you know a, a basic boutique clothing shop. It's it really fundamentally has a lot of the same elements. And I think that for a lot of comic shop owners, if they believe too much that it's a very unique, very, uh, you know, uh, very unusual uh, animal, that the, the comic book shop is, is fundamentally different from any other kind of shop, I feel like it gets them into trouble very quickly because I think they, they start to miss out on really obvious things around promotion and around, you know, business recognition. Uh, one of the things that, that, I mean, it's just, there's a million tiny things that go into running a shop. And in a lot of cases, I think these things are somewhat obvious. They may not be the answers you want, but they're, you know, any, anyone who runs any kind of shop would know. You know for example, um, notice if you have, a, you know, a town, uh, if you're, you're near a city and that has a comic shop, how ingrained is that comic shop into the rest of the, the businesses? Does the owner engage with the other members of the business community? Do they, do they talk to the, you know, if you go into, this is going to sound super old fashioned and it is, but if they, if you go into like the chamber of commerce, or you go into other kind of local municipality, municipality, uh, you know, institutions is the comic shop known. And, and that sounds really weird, but there's a lot of passive friction that can take place for any business. If you're not kind of integrated into the city, uh, you, you want to you want to you want people to be aware of you, and I think frankly um, now, uh, and I'm I'm talking off personal experience, it got a lot easier to be part of the overall you know city business community about ah, five six years ago when when all this money started really clocking with the movies and comic books are uh, are big, even though. People have made the point, they're not wrong, that the movies are, are not necessarily bringing business into comic shops. The fact that the movies and these characters are out there did bring visibility into the fact that, you know, Spider-Man exists, the Avengers are big business, uh, Batman and all these things are, are big. And so if you can hook into that, if you can, if you can basically leverage that recognition, you can get a lot of support from the town. 
one of the biggest problems, and you would not expect this, but it, it, it is, one of the biggest problems comic shops face is that nobody knows they exist. And, and that's an exaggeration. Of course, few people do. But you know, more often than not, people in the city are unaware that there is a comic book shop. They, they, they just don't think, you know, you, the, the problem comic shops have is that people don't think to go to a comic shop. They don't think that a, that such a thing even, you know, it still exists or is even a thing. And, you know, we can, we've talked a lot about, you know, that is uh, an indictment of how terrible kind of the marketing and the, you know, the promotion has been from the publishers, from these giant corporations who could do more to remind people that, yes, there are comic shops. But I can't even begin to tell you, and I guarantee you, if you talk to, uh, you know, any other comic shop owner, try it out. Um, ask them, how many times do people come in the shop and, like, look around in kind of wide-eyed wonder and say things like, wow, I didn't know this was here, or I didn't know they still had places like this. That's, that's really common. I, I would say that multiple times a week I would have that experience. And every time I hear that, um, I cringe because that the fact that nobody knew is a bad thing. It means that, uh, that you know, great, one out of 20 people stumbled into the store. The other 19, you know, are wandering around there never finding my spot in the first place. And so this is this, these are the little things you don't necessarily think about, but getting yourself tied into the business community, figuring out ways to get yourself promoted. Unfortunately, yeah, a lot of people are online, but it, this is not, you know, 1996 and people are going to MapQuest and like typing in comic book shop. Does MapQuest even still exist? I, I have no idea. Uh, but this isn't how it works. And you will be shocked. Uh, you know, people are using their phones a lot to go and, and look up businesses. You have two problems there. Number one, if you put in comic books into your phone, it will give you a variety of search results that are not even comic shops. So they'll, they'll give you just random stupid things, and a lot of comic shops don't even get listed. And number two, people are not even thinking to put in comic shops into their phone in the first place to go look for this stuff. A lot of people go to the bookstore. So you know, if you're running a comic shop, another thing to do is understand your general place in the world and so that does mean going and making friends with Barnes & Noble or the giant box stores and basically setting yourself up as, hey, um, you know, people come into your shop looking for graphic novels, looking for things you don't carry. Can you send them my way? And if you can get that kind of relationship, it can be a big deal. Uh, there's a comic shop up in Linwood that has reasonably successfully uh, co-opted it's probably too strong a word, the Barnes and Noble there so that the, the staff knows, hey, I can send people over to the comic shop. And they do. Uh, much to the detriment of the other comics shop that is very nearby that uh, did not make that relationship. In fact, it took the opposite approach, took almost a uh, don't buy from big box stores. I'm an indie shop and I, uh, you know, we, those box stores are killing our businesses. So they took an adversarial role. They got no recognition. And uh, you know, they, they went out of business relatively quickly. Uh, it, it's You have to be pragmatic about understanding yourself. Uh, comic shops do not have the, the brand and marketing power of Walmart or Barnes & Noble, uh, even if you love comics. And that's why, I guess, again, I go back to, if you think that the comic shop is fundamentally different, from other retail businesses. And, and yes, the product, the specialization of what you sell absolutely is. But the general mechanics of running a shop are the same. And the more you think you're specialized, the more likely you are to set yourself apart from those other businesses. And as soon as you do that, you are on your own. One of the things you have to do to run a successful business is to leverage anything you can. If somewhere in your community, people are promoting games, if the local libraries are pushing comics, if the bookstore is pushing graphic novels, then you should be connected to all of those efforts. Uh, I, I successfully, and I know several others as well, have uh, donated books to the libraries and to the schools. Um, I would love to say that I'm doing that just because I'm a super wonderful guy who loves kids and, and wants to promote reading. That that's absolutely what I tell people. But the, the real reason or the, you know, the other important reason is, you know, when I'm donating those books, I'm 
putting a sticker on those comics or those graphic novels with the name of my shop. I want the kids to read volume one of whatever got donated, and I want them to look at that sticker, go to the library, discover it's not there, and then find their way to my shop because I'm, I'm promoting it. That's, that's all kind of super, super critical stuff. Um, just as critical, but I've done other videos on that, so I don't need to just rehash it, is diversify your products. Uh, that's, that cannot be more critical. And I've used anecdotally the idea of don't let any one product in your shop be more than 20%. And that, that drives people crazy, by the way, when I say that. I don't know why. It's obvious. Uh, but if for whatever reason, that makes people really angry when you say that. Uh, but yeah, you should. And it's not always possible, by the way. It is not. You, you can't always pull this off. But your, your target is not always your reality. But your target is still important. So your target should be, in a perfect world, 20% of your, your money is coming from maybe merchandise, nostalgia-type material. 20% is coming from new comics. 20% is coming from back issues, 20% is coming from uh, games or whatever, and 20% is coming from some other thing. Now, why do you do that? Because, well, you know, at any given month, I mean, well, here, put it this way. Um, this is a lot of conjecture, and it's not actually you know, going to happen this way. But let's say that DC's, uh, you know, Infinite Frontier didn't quite catch. They were slow out the gate. It didn't really do what it needed to do. And so there was an initial interest with some of the launch titles, but then interest quickly faded. And simultaneously, Marvel goes and signs a deal with Penguin Random House, but that deal doesn't kick in until October. So Marvel slow rolls any of their really successful books through the summer, through June, July, August, September, to basically give their, uh, their new Penguin Random House deal as much ammo as possible. So why does that matter to a comic shop? Well, potentially those two factors could equal four months, a third of the year, where the, the new comic market is softer, where instead of bringing in, say, you know, what, whatever it might be, instead of bringing in $40,000, it's bringing in thirty. That's not a big deal, right? It's only $10,000 worth of difference. It's a huge deal. If it's 25% of your revenue is impacted on the whims or just tiny things that companies do, uh, that's a that's a massive blow. And if you have your, you know, like I, I was saying, 20% of everything, if you have your, your market at, say, new comics are bringing in 80% of your revenue, and then you get a 25% drop of that 80%, that's you're now you're now having to lay off some staff. You're now having to to dramatically cut back. That hurts you really really badly instantly. That's why you need that diversification. It's it's important. A million other things. I mean, location always matters. Uh, how you manage the interior of your store matters. Um, you know, there, there's you know, and and it, one thing I've talked about, but probably not enough hiring. The people you hire is is a massive massive factor. Uh, it's it's hard to hire good people, um, in, and comics makes it difficult because a lot of the people who want a job in a comic shop are not necessarily the people that you know you want running the customer interface with the people who are coming in. You know why not? Well, you know I, I, this is going to sound terrible, and it's not always true. But if if it's true that a lot of comic fans are introverts, that is not the best personality type for a retail shop clerk. Uh, if they typically, a lot of comic fans are opinionated, meaning they like DC more than Marvel or vice versa or whatever it happens to be, that's a big factor. You need somebody who can be Switzerland in that comic shop who can basically, you know, detect the people coming in and route them however they want. And so a lot of people come into the comic shop wanting a job tend to come in with a point of view. Like I love the X-Men comics. I want to work in your comic shop. It's like, cool. You're going to be very effective at selling X-Men to X-Men fans or to people who are, close to being X-Men fans, but you are probably going to be ass at selling, uh, you know, Justice League to Justice League fans or, you know, it, that's, that's the challenge. So the hiring actually is a big deal and I should do a video on that at some point. But anyway, these are some factors, just a little conversation about running a comic shop. Hope this was helpful. Um, you know, let me know your thoughts or questions below. I can continue going to this. If you're interested, I always like, I don't know why, but I'm always surprised. Like who wants to hear all this? I, I don't know, but if it was you, I hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe, and thanks for listening.